grace, peace, and mercy be multiplied to you from God our Father, through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. The word of God to which I would direct your attention this day is taken from the gospel for the day, from John chapter 1, verses 1 to 14, particularly verses 4 and 5, which reads as follows. To him was life, and the life was the light of men. The darkness shines in the The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. So far, our reading. In the name of Jesus, dear fellow redeemed. Christmas Day has finally come. Within a few hours, it will disappear for another year with the minor exception, perhaps, of a few after-Christmas sales. We no longer follow the ancient tradition of 12 days of Christmas, beginning on the 25th of December and ending with January 6th. That's not our way. Now we tend to put Christmas away. The Christmas trees will be taken down. The festive decorations will be put away. Many of us who have a little manger set at home will put Jesus and his family away in a box. For you, will there be a sense of the meaning of Christmas remaining in the following months? Or more significantly, does the meaning of Christmas follow us into the rest of our lives? We as believers in Jesus Christ don't doubt his significance. As our gospel lesson reminds us, Jesus is God from all eternity. He was involved in our creation. He is the origin of our life, physical life, spiritual life, eternal life. By means of the forgiveness that he earned for us on the cross, he is our savior from sin. By means of his resurrection power, he is our savior from death. His Holy Spirit has brought us to faith and baptism, and therefore sets us on a new path of life marked by repentance and forgiveness and a striving to live a God-pleasing life filled with righteous deeds done in love. We Christians highly anticipate Christmas. Christmas time because perhaps of many of the customs that we have adopted even from our culture. Special greetings, special songs, and of course, the exchange of presents. Well, when it's gone, which it will be, we set it back in our memories as we move on to post-Christmas activities, post-Christmas responsibilities. We hope, perhaps, to retrieve, to retrieve those Christmas times when the season comes around again next year. The truth of God's word is that the, the coming of Christ is a permanent, not a seasonal blessing. The birth of the Savior is not meant just to brighten up our Decembers, but it's meant to change our understanding of the reality by which we live and by which we die. The one who comes as the manger-cradled infant of Bethlehem is God himself. God himself, who brought you into this world as the object of his love. He brings the light, the light which no darkness can overcome, no matter how great that darkness may be. His power to deliver you from whatever you fear is not limited to the doubts of the unbelieving world around us. The fact that other people don't believe in him 
in no way takes away his power to save you. To save you in this life and for the next life. He has worked faith in your life so that you acknowledge him as he is, Lord and God, Savior of repentant sinners and life giver. Life giver to all who suffer and die in faith in his promises. And he favors you, not for a season, but for eternity. The world cannot diminish his significance by dismissing Christmas as only an opportunity to, to increase its sales profits. He comes as a little child to make you into God's child forever. Perhaps there is the idea that you and I as Christians are, are situated between the comings of Christ. He came about 2,000 years ago, completed his saving work by dying for our sins on the cross and then rising from death and returning to his Father in heaven to await his final coming as judge of all on the last day. Now, we were not physically present when he came as the child of Bethlehem, and we have yet to see him come as the Lord of all power and glory on the last day, the day of judgment. But Christmas is not limited to the celebration of that small period of time when Jesus in his physical body walked upon the earth. Christmas is the time when we rejoice in that Jesus came to stay. Let me repeat that. Christmas is the time when we rejoice that Jesus came to stay. He promised his first century disciples and his present disciples, I am with you always to the end of the age. What we celebrate as Christmas is that Jesus Christ, our Lord, came to claim us by faith as his children for now and forever. Jesus' first coming was to make possible a more permanent second and third coming. How's that again? Third coming? Were we all taught that there are only two comings of Jesus, two advents, that's the word meaning coming. One, of course, when he came at Bethlehem and one when he returns on Judgment Day. Two comings. The first one was when he was born of the Virgin Mary. The second one when he comes in glory to judge the living and the dead. That's the way we've always talked. That's the way we understand Advent, coming. But perhaps we need to see that the first coming of Jesus at Bethlehem made possible the more permanent second coming into the life of his believers, into your life and mine. That coming is prior to his coming as judge on the last day. Now, perhaps it's not helpful for us to believe that Jesus came and went, sort of like we experience the Christmas holiday. It's here and it's gone. A Lutheran theologian and hymn writer by the name of Lucas Lossius who studied under Martin Luther in the early 1530s, wrote something very interesting regarding the comings of Jesus. He wrote this. The church celebrates the triple advent of Christ. First is the advent into the flesh, which is despised and humble before the world. The second is the spiritual advent, which happens daily into the minds of the righteous, since he is present constantly with the church. He hears her, he helps and consoles her, concerning which Christ said, 
I will not leave you as orphans, but will come to you. Again, he said, If anyone loves me, my father and I will come to him and make our dwelling with him. And then, of course, there is the third advent. The third advent of Christ is his glorious return to judgment, concerning which we read in Matthew 23, and they will see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of heaven with much power and majesty. If it is true that the Christmas coming of our Lord is not an isolated event, then we can see a sequence of events here. A sequence of events by which we experience the ongoing love of God in Christ. The first coming in the manger makes possible the second coming with the hearing of his word, with the water of baptism, with the receiving of his body and blood in his supper, and with his gracious, his gracious response to our faithful prayers. Jesus comes to us often. This second spiritual coming prepares us then to be ready for the third coming, the final glorious coming on the day of judgment. Now, the Christmas season is not to be seen as a momentary event, here one day and gone the next, but as a sign for us Christians that Christ has come to aid us, to guide us, to forgive us, to strengthen us, to give us the ability to endure and to sustain our faith and hope by his almighty power, working through word and sacrament and the witness of fellow Christians. The Christ who came into our world in the Bethlehem manger has come today to remind you of your baptism when he claimed you, when he adopted you as his own child to hear your honest confession of sins and offer you his divine forgiveness to guide you with his commandments and to reassure you of your place by faith in his everlasting kingdom. With that in mind, it might be said that because of the presence of our Christ, each and every Sunday is really a minor celebration of his coming at Bethlehem a celebration that renews our hope weekly. You might say we have Christmas all year long. Our Lord's Bethlehem presence will not end until we are greeted with his divine presence, either when we, when we through death, pass from this world or on the last day when we will be ushered into the glory of his eternal kingdom. I've heard of a pastor who feared that his congregation members attending Christmas Eve service would not return for the Christmas Day service because, well, uh, they would feel that their Christmas obligations were fulfilled. If you will, for them, Christmas was over on Christmas Eve. So the pastor had an idea. He supplied each of the adult members on Christmas Eve with a sheet of lined paper. At the top was printed the words, Dear Jesus. Then he explained, I know many of you will not be here tomorrow, and I think it's necessary for you to do something. I would like you to write a note to Jesus telling him why you won't be present on Christmas Day service tomorrow. So far, the pastor. It seems that that pastor was concerned that his members were too anxious to put Christmas behind them in order to attend to more important things. No, God does not condemn you if you don't attend two services on Christmas. But this is the idea that Christmas is easily put away and put away for another year. 
when what Christmas has to offer us is something for our daily benefit. The Christ of the Christmas manger, the Son of God, has come to give us the blessing of his presence in word and sacrament. He continues to come to us in his grace and mercy, calling us to repentance and faith so that we remember that his Christmases, his Christmas promises never end. In his name, amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen.